common clinical and examination problem is differentiating between a Bell's palsy or a lower motor neuron type of facial nerve palsy or a supranuclear facial palsy or upper motor neuron type of palsy. So let's try to do that and learn why these subtle differences are there. So right here in the center of your page, you see a Bell's palsy or lower motor neuron type of weakness. So quite simply, the half of the face is weak. In this diagram, it is left half of the face that is weak and it is lower motor neuron type of weakness of cranial nerve seven left side. So the features that you see right here, we'll start from top. There is loss of wrinkling on the forehead inability to close the eye now it is really important these will differentiate between an upper motor neuron weakness and a lower motor neuron type of weakness also there is loss of nasolabial fold and there is look very clearly the face is droopy towards the left now the face is deviated towards the right but the droopy side is the left side, so there is weakness on the left arm. So all these findings are seen on the left. That is a lower motor neuron type of weakness, most commonly bells of the left sided facial nerve. Look, the upper half of the face and the lower half of the face are both involved. Now let's look at a central supranuclear or upper motor neuron type of facial weakness. The difference is that the uh, you see the eye is all right and there is no loss of you see right wrinkling of the forehead so you see wrinkles around here and you see wrinkles around here so the only weakness is the lower half of the face now you have lost the nasolabial fold there is droopy mouth towards the left and deviation thus towards the right so there is a lower half of face weakness that is to the left side so it is cranial nerve seven upper motor neuron type of weakness and it will be present on the right hemisphere of the brain. Why we are seeing this disparity? Let's just see these two side by side. Why we are seeing this disparity? That a bells would show weakness of the upper face and the lower face and a central facial palsy would show weakness of only the lower half of the face. It is because all the cranial nerves are supplied by both hemispheres, except for the facial nerve, which is different in the fact that only the upper half of the face is supplied by both hemispheres. So let's trace it right here. This is the supply to the upper half this is the nerve this is being supplied to the upper half now if you trace it you go here and it is receiving fibers from both the hemispheres now if you have a lesion in the left cortex or the left hemisphere then the right will still be able to power and supply the upper half of the face but the lower half of the face you can trace it around here this it is only supplied by the contralateral hemisphere so when you will have a deficit around here there is no supply from this side to cover for this loss so you will have a lower half of face that is weak due to a lesion around here so i hope it makes it clear you can see
see the video again. So in summary, that the upper half of the face, the muscles are getting powered from both sides. So one side weakness would still be covered from the other side, whereas the lower half of the face is only getting powered or supplied from this side, the opposite side. So weakness around here will cause a weakness around here. That would be like we saw a lower half of face weakness here. Again, just review Bell's palsy. It is the lower motor neuron type of weakness. And if you cut the nerve, no matter what supply is going on from behind, you've got dual supply or single supply, the upper half and the lower half will not be supplied because the nerve itself has been damaged around here. So if there's any question, I know it's a complicated uh, concept, but once you learn it, it becomes quite easy and I hope you never forget it. So if there are any questions, you're welcome to ask them in the comments.